Hey, hello everyone, and welcome to all of you from the Mary Shores page, our Declaring Gratitude Facebook group, as well as Fearless Ambition. I am here with Cheryl Muir, and we are going to do a quick, quick Q&A for aspiring authors. Um, we actually tried to do this live. We got into all kinds of technical issues, so we're going to be posting the video in just a little while. So welcome, Cheryl. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing great, thank you. How are you? Mm. I'm so good, and I am so excited. So I've had a blue for about two weeks, and I'm just getting feeling much better. So I'm so excited about that. Oh, wait a minute. I got like a funny, let me get rid of this in the background. All right. Background. Well, that's better. This is our Christmas picture that we just took from our with our staff, so it's super fun. Well, I'm going to get started right away with the questions because I'm so excited to um, talk about these. So a question came in from Jennifer McCormick on Facebook, and she says, this is a really good question, and I think it's so, so important. And we'll, Cheryl and I will both answer the question. She says, the structure of the book is what holds me back from starting. I guess I'm looking for a starting point. Do I use a structured template or just let the words flow? What is best to engage readers? Possibly a bit of both. So I'll start um, with my answer to this question. One of the reasons why I'm so committed and passionate about doing the Aspiring Writers Workshop is because um, I wish somebody had been around to tell me these things when I first got started, because these are the kinds of questions that I had no idea um, how to get started. It's like, I just wish I had someone that could take me by the hands and like really tell me what are the first few steps. So the structure of the book is extremely important, important. and what you want to do is you want to write an outline, and I'm actually going to be giving you um, the outline template that I used when I wrote my book, as well as I'm going to be teaching you a chapter planner exercise that is very specific to me. I just created this for myself, where you take each chapter, so you're going to have a master outline, right, and in each if you're doing a teaching memoir, you're going to start with having um, each chapter laid out the same way with at least three sub bullets. Now, the wonderful thing is we're going to be giving you a free outline for your entire book, but also this chapter planner, which you're going to, it's going to be like fill in the blank, which is going to, you're going to use the chapter planner to write the outline. So I think that's wonderful. Cheryl, what's your thoughts on structuring the book? And yes, it will hold you back because if you don't write the outline, you'll never finish the book. Absolutely. So one way I like to um, cover my outlines, and I'm actually moving, I've got a slightly different perspective because although my clients are nonfiction, I have mm -hmm. been writing fiction. So I'm now moving into writing nonfiction books myself. And when I'm writing my outlines, I'm looking at the subject matter and the problem that I'm solving for my readers, and I'm basically breaking it down into steps. So I'm working right now on an outline for a book about Twin Flames. So I've brainstormed all of the misconceptions out there about Twin Flames, all of the places where people stumble, um, all of the the things that are talked about that are just simply not true and frankly some of the things that I'm really passionate about on both sides on the side that I love about the twin flame journey and the side that I find quite annoying and some of the narrative that I find quite annoying within the twin flame space so anytime you're really passionate about a subject write all of that down and, and they may become some of the misconceptions that you address in the book and from that you might get 10 or 12 points and that becomes your outline and then you're basically ah. taking the entire word count of the book and dividing that by the steps. So let's say you have an 80,000 word book, which is pretty typical for nonfiction, and then you're dividing that by the 12 steps, and then that's the length of each chapter too, and that breaks it down into a really nice manageable format for you. I like that too, and I've done that. I've started with like a big giant post-it note, and I've like done word clouds, a brainstorm, and like put things into different categories, and then taken that to, to, to form an outline. So one of the points that I want to make, because a lot of people have several book ideas inside of them, and they don't really know which way, which one to start with. So my new rule of thumb has become, if I can sit down for one of my book ideas, and I can write a six to nine chapter outline, then I know I can write the proposal. Then from the proposal, I know that I can write the book. So the next question um, came in from Ann Lane on Facebook. This must be um, a friend of Cheryl's. It says, how do I get started and remain consistent? So Cheryl, what is your thoughts on the getting started, number one, 
and remaining consistent. Mm -hmm. So I would start with your topic. So it's going to be the thing that you're really, really passionate about. And if you're in the nonfiction space already, whether it's spirituality, whether it's coaching, maybe it's nutrition, fitness, whatever it might be, it's going to be what you're teaching your clients effectively. And that's going to become your books. That's how you get started. It's the initial idea. And it should really light you up. And if, if your book idea doesn't light you up and that's aligned with what you're doing business-wise, then maybe there's some changes, changes that need to happen there as well. And then once you've got started with that momentum of, I'm really excited about this idea, and then you've got the chapter outline that we've just talked about, the next thing is writing goals. So you need to decide how you're going to publish the book. That's one of the first things. Because if you are publishing a nonfiction book and you want a book deal, then you're not gonna be writing the entire book to start with your writing the book proposal. So actually the first thing before you even start writing is how am I publishing it? Because if you're getting the book deal, you're not writing the book, you're writing the proposal. If you're self-publishing or doing this sort of assisted self-publishing or hybrid self-publishing model, which we'll go into in a lot more detail during the aspiring author workshop, then you will be writing the full book. So although it sounds counterintuitive to talk about publishing before the book's even written, it's essential that you start with knowing how you're going to publish the book. Yeah, I think that's I think that's really great. And when I was um, just recently at the Right Spree speak promote event for Hay House, which is how to become a mover and shaker. You know, one of the points of advice I was giving people is one of the ways you can use to decide whether you want to do traditional publishing or self-publishing is what are the goals of the book. Mm -hmm. So if you need it for more of a business card or, you know, uh, to establish yourself as an expert, it's a really great idea to self-publish. And then, but if you already have a platform, like for example, myself, um, with, with my book, Conscious Communications, um, I'm not a personal coach. And so my goals were different because it wasn't to try to get clients. And so for me, it was very important to want to get a traditional publisher because I'm looking at having a, a very large national platform. Um, the next question that came in, which is very similar about um, this, last, this last question, which is time, always time, with three exclamation points. The, so that came from Mosami Jewelry on Twitter. Now, I think that's such a great point because um, the thing that, and it, it goes right along with what Cheryl was just saying, is like you have to commit yourself. And so one of the ways that I did this was I broke the book down and had certain deadlines. Now, of course, I had a contract with Hay House. So I had, um, by the time I signed the contract, I already had one chapter completely finished and I had a couple of others already started. And so I'd actually written chapter five first, but I set myself deadlines. So I knew what the date, the due date was of the first draft. And then I divided that in and gave myself three to four weeks to write each chapter. But here we go. And right back to the beginning of the Q&A that because I already had that outline written and it was a very detailed outline and because I had already written the proposal, it was really more of an unpacking process. So it was taking like my chapter abstracts, it was taking my outline and adding in as much information as possible and then going back in and filling in the, um, the words and paragraphs and all of the structure of the, cha of the chapters. But yes, you have to have a lot of discipline and being committed to the end result goal. And so, um, Cheryl, we've just got a couple minutes left. Um, can I put, um, we'll have to break this up into more Q and A's, but what is the value in writers promoting their books to other writers? This was a really great question that came in on Twitter and I was actually talking to the lady who'd asked it and she's talking about this phenomenon particularly amongst fiction but it, it happens in the non-fiction space as well where you start using these hashtags like hashtag am writing but mm. without really understanding who's looking at that hashtag so the hashtag am writing is used in the writing community so when you're using that hashtag you need to realize that's the people who are looking at it so the question becomes who is your reader if your reader isn't a fellow writer i.e unless you're writing a book like big magic which is about creativity and writing you don't want to be targeting that audience so you need to think about who is my reader and mary i know we went really into a lot of detail and steps when we did the interview in your group, group fearless ambition so i'd really encourage people to check that out if they haven't already seen it but really break down um who is your reader and how do you find them on social media and it might not be in those really typical hashtags like i'm writing so be really aware of that if you are targeting them consciously that's fine but be aware of how you're reaching people 
Yeah. So do you have a um, do you have a suggestion for a hashtag that's that's pretty hot right now in the personal development space? Um, I'm a fan of some of the Gabby Bernstein ones. You know, she's so okay. popular and she has a lot of really um, a really dedicated tribe. So hashtags like Spirit Junkie are very perennial. She obviously has Judgment Detox coming out. I mean, obviously you don't want to piggyback too much on somebody else's right. um, hashtag, but so be conscious of that. But at the same time, when you know um, you have an audience that's similar, that can be a place where you can find a, a section of your tribe as well. Yeah, I think um, like looking at women's empowerment, there's been some that I've found that I've been using there. So the last um, the last thing that came in was from a friend of mine, Andrea Joseph, in the Declaring Gratitude group. And I just, I love this comment, and I'll, I'll end on this, is she says, I've got several book ideas. Is it weird that I actually don't want to share them for fear that someone will steal them? I actually love this question because um, this is one of the things that I used to worry about. So before I got started, um, I would have all these book ideas, but I would never want to talk about them because I thought, such a great idea. Um, someone else is going to want that and they're going to take my, take my idea. So here's the answer. It's not weird that you feel that way. I think that so many, especially as aspiring authors, feel that way, and I think it's very, very natural. Here's the answer, though. Don't worry about it, because even, because you know what? Your book idea is probably already been written. It's amazing how many people, like, read my book and then tell me, oh, I'm the, the book I'm writing is just like yours, where they think that, like, they accidentally came across this idea. Well, the reason is, is because, the ideas aren't necessarily new, but it's the story that you tell and it's the way that you tell it that no one else can ever do. So you don't have to worry about that because if you're, if it's, you know, like with my book, Conscious Communications, it's a personal development book. There are probably hundreds of thousands of personal development books published and none of them are like mine. None of them are going to have the exercises in the same way. None of them are going to have the, the material organized in the same way. And they certainly don't have my story. So, Andrea, no one else owns your story. That is just you. And I want you to encourage, I want to encourage you to talk about your book idea. And because you'll be, um, one of the ways more ideas come to you is by talking about the ideas. Mm -hmm. So, with that, um, Cheryl, tell, tell everyone about our upcoming workshop that I'm super excited about. Absolutely. So we have the Aspiring Author Workshop that's coming up on Sunday, January 14th. So really fresh into the new year. And it's a two-hour live event. You can join anywhere in the world. If you can't join us live, we'll send you the recording afterwards. And we're covering everything um, in more detail than, than we've had the chance to cover tonight. So everything from writing, publishing and promoting your book, building a platform, which is essential when you're writing nonfiction or really any genre. And mm -hmm. tickets are just $79. We wanted to keep this really affordable. We could have had tickets for a couple hundred dollars but we really wanted it accessible for all of you and there's lots of really juicy bonuses as well like a sample of Mary's book proposal that won a ten thousand dollar contract with Hay House uh, there's a chapter planner there's a pitch note guide for approaching media for myself uh, there's lots of really good stuff there and we'll pop the details down below so I really encourage you to check that out and join us if you can Yes, thank you so much. We're going to, um, one of the things I'm excited about that I've just putting the finishing touches on yesterday is we're going to go through section by section of a book proposal, and I'm going to tell you why every one of these sections is important, um, what information you're going to include in it, and all the links, the different lengths of all the sections of the proposal. So proposals are so very important, and you'll be so grateful that you wrote one because it's going to be the foundation of your entire book. So thank you so much, Cheryl, for jumping on this with me today, and um, I will see you next time. We'll thank do another Q&A real soon. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.